if you are into grocery hauls like I am, you're in for a treat over here at Twinkle Twinkle Little Spatula. I like to post weekly grocery hauls for our family of five. We are mom and dad and three daughters aged 13, three, and one. And we have a weekly budget of $200 that we spend on food. And if we plan to eat out, we budget that into the budget as well. This week there will be no eating out as we splurged a little bit last week with Mother's Day. And so I spent my entire $200 budget on groceries. And actually without even like using a calculator or writing it out, the bill came to, not to brag, but to brag a little, my bill came to $200.80 exactly. So couldn't have planned that better myself. So let's get in to see um, first of all, I'll show you what our weekly dinner meal plan is, and then I will show you the groceries. So here's our weekly dinner menu meal plan that I always have hanging up on our fridge. And I am working on a video that I plan to post soon, how I come up with the meal plan, how I write out my grocery list, and um, other food related things that go beyond just dinners to feed a family. Um, but for this video today, I'm just going to show you our weekly dinner plans and then um, kind of just talk about the groceries that supplement at other times of day. So the first thing I want to show you is a video that will be coming soon, um, how to make what we call Greek chicken. And the only items I needed for that were a whole roasting chicken and two lemons. I already have the seasonings and the potatoes in my pantry. Um, the next night we're gonna eat leftover pulled pork sandwiches on pretzel buns, kettle chips, and baked beans. Um, so that is everything. I didn't have to buy anything for that. So that was a zero dollar dinner. And then Friday, um, pork chops are in the freezer, rice is in my pantry, and then I did buy um, a few items that I needed to replenish to make Greek salads, which were um, on the vine tomatoes, my favorite red onion, and a green pepper. I still have a couple of cucumbers in um, my fridge, and Chad just went and bought some feta from our local Euro shop. So we're set there. And then Saturday, we're having honey mustard chicken sandwiches and, on pretzel buns. And um, so there are the pretzel buns. You buy those in the deli department. And then I went to a new super one today that has a meat counter, so I've been really missing that. And I bought this um, uh, flavored chicken breast. I had the butcher slice them through, um, and I plan to cook those on the grill. We haven't started our grill up this year, but I do hope to do that. And then on the side is something I call a winter salad, and it's something that um, in Greece they eat throughout the winter because uh, these things are easily found there. Um, here in the United States, of course, we can find these items year round in our supermarkets. But leaf lettuce, um, green onions, dill, and red wine vinegar is what you need. And actually, I think I should film that too because it's really delicious. These ingredients here will make two salads. So anytime I make a winter salad, I make one, eat it right away, and then I package one up in the fridge so it's ready to go the next time. It's a real time saver. Um, super delicious. So maybe I'll do a little video on that. Um, and Sunday we're going to have taco rice. That's these ingredients here. I've already filmed how to make taco rice, so I can link that in the description box below. Everything that I, you don't see here, I already have in my pantry. And then the next night after that, I'm trying a new recipe. And um, they didn't have the kind of pasta that the recipe called for, but I used these in a Tuscan sausage um, recipe this week that was absolutely delicious. So I just picked those up again and then the broccoli, the fresh broccoli, and I have sausage in my freezer. Um, so that's all I needed for that meal. So that was pretty easy. And then I did have to buy a number in of ingredients for another new recipe. Um, and that's here. This is going to be Hawaiian pork tacos with a pineapple slaw. And then we're going to have, um, the corn on the cob on the side. So I did buy a whole pineapple. The girls, when they saw me unpacking that, they were like, what is that? And they were super excited about that. So that's another fun tip. Um, you know, it's important. Everybody always says it kind of sounds cliche to know where your food is coming from, but especially if you're raising children 
And if you're just opening up a can of pineapple, it's fun every now and then, which canned pineapple is great, I use it all the time, but every now and then to buy the whole fruit and to show them um, what it is, where it comes from, talk about how it's grown, you know, where it's grown, and those sorts of things. So uh, just a little tip there. And then I started buying these a couple years ago for different recipes. Sometimes I used to skip it because I thought it was like too of a much of a like hassle or a fancy thing, but they they actually make a big difference. The recipe called for red Hawaiian salt, which the grocery store did not have, but a close um, replacement to that is this pink Himalayan salt that I know is quite trendy. And then liquid smoke, which I did not have in my pantry, but um, figured I'd pick up a bottle of that. That's, I need that for this recipe. The pork shoulder is in my freezer. Um, so didn't need that. And then cilantro and oh my gosh, does cilantro smell good. I know from previously having worked at a Mexican restaurant that cilantro can be um, one of those polarizing ingredients that some people really dislike, but I don't understand it because it's honestly one of my favorite herbs ever. We're actually gonna be going, growing it in our garden this year. Um, and then I needed a little red cabbage, couple of limes, and you know what? I don't remember if the ginger is for this recipe. It might be for, um, I'm also meal prepping a lunch this week, a chicken curry, and it might be for that. So that does, I don't think goes there. I think that's for my chicken curry, which I didn't need anything else. It's everything I already have. So um, that's what that's for. And then I'll just kind of go down here and talk about the other things that aren't necessarily dinner items. So Granny Smith apples, those are Zania's favorite food, <laughs> snack, fruit, whatever. She loves them. She requests them every single week. So I got her um, five of those. And then I did up our fruit this week because we have been just running out. Like no matter how much I buy, we run out of it. And so, I mean, it doesn't get any healthier than fruit. And so I just bought more. I bought the same stuff that we've been buying. So we've been buying the strawberries, the raspberries, the blueberries, the bananas. And then I added, I heard the produce manager talking to another customer. He's like, we have our first cherries of the season out of California. So I was like, where are those cherries? And they were expensive, you guys. These were, I think, $6 a pound. Um, but when you don't get cherries year round and you hear that the first crop came in, <laughs> if you're me, you get very excited. Um, so I did splurge on some cherries and I hope they're delicious. Also that honeydew, I don't, I thought it was going to be not very expensive. It ended up being a $6 honeydew. So that I'm going to let sit and ripen, um, and not cut into that for a number of days. The watermelon was a super deal. It was $3.99 for that whole watermelon. So like less than that cantaloupe. Um, but we'll see if it's any good. I don't know. I almost never buy watermelon because it's usually disappointing, especially after you've had it in Greece. Um, you come back to the States and you're like, you know what? It's just pointless to buy it here because it just does not taste the same. Doesn't taste how you how watermelon should taste. A funny side note, too, about watermelon, um, I didn't even know the English word for watermelon until I was well into, like, my childhood, like, you know, nine or ten maybe even, um, because we had eaten so much of it in Greece as a child, I learned the word for it in Greek before English, so I will teach you today, if you want to say watermelon in Greek, you call it karpousi, so there's our karpousi this week. And then um, I just put all of our lunch items here. I bought these two. This is my favorite um, bread like that I have found. That's a decent price. It was on sale for $2.99 a loaf. Um, one of my coworkers told me that the Green Label Oat Nut one is also very good. And he said this is great with peanut butter toast. So I bought both of those and I can put one of them in my freezer. Hot dogs for the babies. Um, they like those. And then Chad asked for um, sandwich fixings for his lunch and the super one that I went to today had this um, garlic herb chicken breast deli meat that we do not have at my deli so I bought a pound of that I didn't even taste it I should have asked to taste it but I'm sure it's delicious so that's what I bought for sandwiches his favorite cheese is provolone for a sandwich um, the snacking cheeses that I bought last week were absolutely delicious so this time I got the American Grana Parmesan because my deli manager told me that that's even better. So again, a little bit of a splurge. You don't get that much cheese, um, but 
They were on sale for $3.33. This is my favorite sandwich cheese. Um, so I got that for myself and it was on sale too. That was a good price for this, you know, kind of higher end cheese. And then these are Chad's favorite yogurts to put in his work lunch. He likes these Chobani flips. I'm not a fan of them. To me, they're way too like sweet and not yogurty at all, but Chad definitely has a sweet tooth. I've talked about that before. I always forget which flavors he likes. So I always get different ones and he tells me that they're all good. So I'm, I'm sure he likes some more than others. I just can't keep that in my brain. So today I got apple crisp twist, nutty for Nana, salted caramel crunch, um, coconut snowball, honey pistachio crunch. I don't know that I've ever bought that one before. He loves pistachios, so I wish that's good. And almond coco loco. So those are for his lunch. Um, these pickles are for the babies for snacking and this lettuce um, I have uh, you saw ahead of it before for our dinner salads I'm gonna be meal prepping some tuna salads for my work lunches and so I just needed that and then um, I'm making them the way that my dad serves them at the restaurant so if anybody's interested in seeing a tuna salad made with lettuce um, in a super healthy way that you can meal prep, <laughs> comment down below and I can film that for you. Um, and then our pantry was very bare in the snack department. We have eaten all the snacks that I kind of built up. And so I decided today was a good day to replenish the pantry for snacks. We've been buying these every week since my birthday. Those are so good. Um, Persephone has been asking for goldfish, which I have never been in the habit of buying. I hear that here in the States, this is like a American staple food for American children. Um, so she's been asking for those. So I bought those today. These are one of my guilty pleasures. I almost never buy these. They're not really a guilty pleasure. I guess they're super healthy, but um, I open the box and I eat the whole thing. So that's not appropriate way to snack. <laughs> Um, so I had to stop buying them actually for years because I could not control myself. So we'll see how I do with these if I'm able to make them last longer than one night watching Netflix. We'll see. I showed you these in a grocery haul way, way, way long time ago. And then I did have my cousin ask how they were. And I am here to report that they are absolutely delicious. So I hope that they continue to make these and stock the shelves with them. It's always fun to see um, Greek foods kind of normalized in American households. So tzatziki uh, flavored triscuits are good. I can endorse those fully. Um, these whole wheat thins are great. They're kind of on the sweet side. Zayna loves them, so do I. And then Cheez-Its are one of her favorite crackers to have, so I bought a big family size. These were both on sale, um, so that's why it was a good time to replenish the pantry with those. And then these were also on sale. I've gone through a period of my life where I was addicted to these as well. Um, and Chad just mentioned the other day that um, he had had some of these. And so when I saw that those were on sale, I made sure I grabbed those. Um, so I think we're good, definitely in the, like the salty snack area. Um, that's kind of my favorite way to snack. I'm not really into like the sweets and chocolates and ice creams that a lot of people are, but this is this is my favorite, favorite, favorite kind of foods. All right, the milk back there, you've seen those before. Yana gets um, the whole milk and Persephone and Zaina drink 1%. I bought another big thing of the yogurt. Zaina's into making smoothies right now. Um, otherwise, we'll eat that with honey or I can make tzatziki with it. Um, I do have some cucumbers left over, so super versatile. I like to have that on hand. And then these two items here are also what Zaina requested. She wanted bagels. I surprised her last week with blueberry bagels and those were a raving hit with all of the children. So I bought those again. She asked for more whipped topping. I'm probably gonna have to cut her off at some point, but this week was not that week. So I got her one of those. Um, I've been looking for broccoli florets in the frozen section at my super one. They've been out every single week for weeks on end. So when I saw them, I grabbed them. I don't need them for anything this week, but I will put them in my freezer so I have them on hand. And then these three items here are uh, the caboose. These are Chad's 
quests. He likes that Baja Blast Mountain Dew, cookies and cream ice cream, and um, pork egg rolls. Those egg rolls, you guys, those were expensive. Like, even though he asked for them, I almost didn't buy them because they were $8.99 for that box. And um, that's a humongous splurge. So, um, Chad, if you're watching this, you're welcome. Your wife loves you. She splurged on some egg rolls for you. And if you have stuck around through this whole grocery haul because you love them as much as I do, today I'm, you're in for a treat because I'm going to do a before and after of the refrigerator and the pantry after I restock it with these groceries. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. All right, so first I wanna show you the before I put the groceries in the fridge. And now if you are me and you grew up with a mom like mine that had an empty refrigerator, you might think this already looks full. But um, if you know me, this is like an empty refrigerator. Um, that's what the door looks like. This is what we... This is what we call our deli drawer. So that's what we have in there. This is our fruit drawer. Vegetable drawer. Um, and then this is our... Okay, put it down. Um, main shelf, skinny shelf, and top shelf. So that's the before the groceries Mom. go in the fridge. So I just had my helper, Persephone, helping to put all the groceries away. Can you say hi? Hi. Do you like helping mom? Yeah. Okay. Let's see how the fridge looks now that we put everything in there. Mommy broke the fridge. Well, I'm so organized that it barely looks any different. And yes, I, I did break the fridge. I accidentally shut the door with the deli drawer still open. So we have a little repair work to do there. Um, but other than that, I just wanted to Give you a little bit of a close-up all those little milks on the top shelf are what we get from our breakfast and lunch deliveries from the school bus lunches and then everything is just packed in a little bit tighter um that chicken's out front because i'm going to make that in just uh, like an hour or two for dinner tonight we're having greek chicken and then i was able to organize the deli drawer with meats on the right um and then into cheeses and this is just a little bit left from last week. I have a couple carrots and a little tiny bit of hummus. So that's just an easy snack. Um, so that drawer is organized. Okay, just a second. Um, my vegetable drawer is busting full. And as is my fruit drawer. And then when I get home from the grocery store, I usually don't have that much time um, to prep my ingredients. But when I find time, I will go back into them um, and like wash fruit or chop veggies or prepackage it up so that it's easier um, to eat rather than thinking you have to like wash and chop something. So when I have some time here or there, I kind of... Hi, Persephone. Hi. What are you doing? What? In the pantry. Standing next to the pantry? Yeah. Yep. And in true Stacy fashion, I forgot to film what the pantry looked like before we put our groceries in there. So you didn't get to see it kind of on the more empty side, although my mother would say it was too full even before I put more stuff in there. But um, I guess I like to have a lot of food around. I think that must have happened. Um, Chad and I both talk about when we were growing up, we just... Grew up in families that struggled a lot. Not to say that Chad and I don't struggle because we do, um, but our parents struggled more than we struggle now. So um, both of us grew up in houses that um, I would say had some food insecurities. And so both of us enjoy having a lot of food around. So um, be careful, I do not want you to fall. So this is our pantry, um, fully stocked. We have baking goods up at the top. This second shelf here is canned goods and dried like, pastas and rices. Can I see? Yep. And then that is our snack shelf I've showed before, <laughs> um, which on purpose is at that level so that the girls can all see what the snack choices are and that they're accessible to them. Now there are rules about opening the pantry and who is supposed to open the pantry? Me. Are you? Yeah. No. Who is supposed to open the pantry? Yeah. Yana is not supposed to open the pantry. Me 
Yes. Yes. Mom and dad or Zania, right? How about mom? And you got to ask for a snack, right? Mm-hmm. So that's our snack. And then the bottom is where I have heavier stuff. Just in case something falls, I don't want it to fall too far. Um, so these are our, like, jars and um, what do I call it? I don't know. Sauces and seasonings. It's not really seasonings, but uh, that's that. And then I have a couple of onions there. I have that little ginger, and there is a garlic back there hiding. Um, so that's the pantry, fully stocked. Persephone, can you tell everybody thank you for coming today? Thanks for coming today. <laughs> oh, and then this is our little overflow um, area where corn on the cob does not need to be refrigerated. Neither does that pineapple and the honeydew or cantaloupe. Actually, it's a cantaloupe. Um, is going to sit out and ripen for a few days before we cut into it. So that's just oh, kind of our oh, overflow area. Okay, I just wanted to say thank you for stopping into my channel. And if you enjoy grocery hauls like today's video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And um, I'm going to try to get up some videos soon here of In the Kitchen with me, as well as that meal planning um, video and how I come up with my grocery list. That's one I have in store. And if you have any requests, leave it in the comments below. Have a great day. Can you say bye?